Are you tired of watching basic chamber guides that only scratch the surface of what the agent can do? Do you feel like you're wasting time analyzing pro gameplay and experimenting with setups without seeing much improvement? Well, you're not alone. I spent countless hours mastering chamber and I know the struggle. That's why in this video series, I'm gonna share every detail I've learned so you can skip the frustration and start dominating with chamber. Oops, wrong picture. Oh, not that one either. Ah, there we go. To truly understand Chamber's capabilities, we first need to explore the various roles he can fulfill on a team. Note that I said roles, plural. This is because Chamber is much more than a sentinel or duelist like many people debate. He can be played in countless ways, and having to adapt to each game is what makes him such an exciting agent. In fact, creativity and adaptability are the two most crucial skill sets needed to master Chamber, not AIM. In order to grow these skill sets, you need to avoid learning setups, and first start with his roles. Relying solely on memorized setups can lead to inconsistency and bad habits in the long run. Don't make the same mistake I did by memorizing all the YouTube setups. This is a common pitfall of the generic chamber guides. They make it seem like all your problems will go away if you memorize a few TP setups, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Consistency starts with being able to adapt to the game to game and round to round variables that determine the effectiveness of different roles, playstyles, and setups. Let's focus on understanding his roles so that you can make informed decisions on where and how to play each round. Playing defense is where Chamber truly shines. The roles Chamber plays on defense include First Blood, Anchor, and Multifrag. Let's start with First Blood. First Blood is when you play aggressively at the start of a round hoping to get one and get out. This is one of Chamber's best roles as a 5v4 advantage for the defenders has a staggering 75% win rate. Here's a cool graph taken from over 2000 rounds played in the VCT last year. Keep in mind that the graph on the left is only looking at the win percentage before Spike is planted, which is why the defenders have a higher win percentage than someone would expect. I'll link the reddit post in the description if you want to learn more. The enemy's utility is by far the biggest threat when playing this role. If you're flashed or about to be suppressed, it's better to TP away to safety than take unnecessary risk. However, if the enemy uses a utility that only limits mobility or is non-life threatening such as stuns, tethers, or drones, you should stay and take the fight until you absolutely have to TP. Remember to use off angles in the full range of the TP to catch the enemy off guard. After getting a kill, don't be greedy. Going for multiple kills is the most common mistakes players make in this role. At most, you should be shooting two bullets before teleporting. Your trip is valuable to your team, don't die early. If you get information that the enemy team is hitting the other site, you should try flanking. This is the best role to flank with because you're already pushed up the choke point making the timings easier. When deciding if you should play first blood, keep some things in mind. Multiple initiators on the enemy team can quickly clear you off the angle with their utility, making your TP useless. On the other hand, playing aggressively when you're on eco can be a great way to secure a weapon for your team. And if an important enemy ult like Killjoys is one point away, it's best to play first blood and contest the orb. Overall, playing first blood is all about taking calculated risk in order to give your team the advantage. The next role Chamber has is Anchor. This role is characterized by the ability to hold all choke points on a site from either your vision or trip. Anchoring allows your teammates to stack and rotate faster to the other sites. This strategy is particularly effective against teams that use lurkers and fake sites, which are common at higher ranks. The most common mistake that players make while playing this role is dying alone on site. If the enemy team rotates to the site you're holding, try to slow down their push and give your team time to help, but don't attempt to 1v5. Instead, teleport to safety and play retake. You know to play this role when the enemy team is constantly getting spiked down and your team is always playing retake at a numbers disadvantage. Don't be afraid to become the in-game leader. Communicate that you're going to anchor and that your teammates should stack the other side. Chamber's final role is multi-frag. This role involves playing passively on or near site by holding an off angle, rat corner, or position that lets you play off your trip. Unlike anchoring, your TP is placed solely for the purpose of getting kills, not safety. There's a large variety of setups for this role, so be creative and avoid repeating the same setup twice in a game. Communicate your plan to avoid baiting your teammates. If you're wanting to play behind the box on A site in Ascent, tell your teammates that you are not peeking, so they don't get a false sense of security that the site is clear. This role is high risk, high reward. Almost all of my aces and 4Ks come from playing this role. That being said, don't play it on opponent's eco rounds. Kills aren't as important on enemy eco rounds, and these setups should be saved for high impact rounds. The downside to this role is when enemies don't hit your site, you'll have little map control, will be late to the flank, and won't be in a position to anchor. An important factor in deciding how effective a setup may be is conditioning. Conditioning is when you play in a certain way on purpose so the enemy team starts to develop expectations. 
For example, in this clip on Pearl, after multiple rounds, the enemy stopped using utility to clear a specific angle due to conditioning. I proceeded to take advantage of this and get multiple kills. Being able to condition the enemy can lead to big plays. On attack, Chamber has three roles, lurking, second entry, and support. Lurking is a strategic role in Valorant where a player positions themselves on the opposite side of their map from their team to gain a positional advantage on the enemy. Lurkers move around the map based on information they gather from footsteps and can achieve various goals such as gaining map control or looking for kills. As a chamber player, it's important to consider the team composition before deciding to lurk. If your team already has a sentinel, it's best not to lurk as the other sentinel is less useful when they're not lurking. It's also important to consider the enemy's gameplay patterns and ultimates before lurking. Agent ultimates such as skies or ciphers can ruin the positional advantage you're going for. Here are a few tips for effective lurking. Understand your opponent's gameplay to help find potentially free areas of the map. Take advantage of the enemy's over rotations and fast flanks. Wait for your team to show presence on the other site before pushing. For example, in this clip, I am passively holding mid for almost 30 seconds since my team hasn't shown full presence A and they're smoked. Holding mid like this allows me to maintain map control and catch any fast flankers off guard. As soon as my team commits, the enemies are going to be calming that we are rushing A. This is the perfect time to catch an enemy rotating and sure enough, Killjoy is running with her back turned to me. Like I said, when chambers played correctly, you won't need good aim. Don't lurk multiple times in a row. Lurking creates pressure on areas of the map without the need to be present, which helps your team by causing fewer defenders to rotate. Take advantage of this and 5 stack with your team. Never lurk on an enemy's eco round. Dying could result in the enemy team gaining a weapon. All it takes for a thrifty round is a singular vandal. Remember, confidence is key when lurking. Any hesitations could cause you to lose your timings. Chamber's next role on attack is second entry. As second entry, your goal is to support your duelists as they entry and capitalize off the space they created, positioning yourself to trade them if necessary. This means following them even if it puts you in a dangerous situation. Your other responsibilities include clearing angles, breaking enemy utility, and fighting enemies your duelist spots. If your team has multiple duelists, then being second entry is not as effective. However, if they're not playing their role properly or your team is struggling to get on site, playing second entry can be helpful. It's also a good option when facing multiple sentinels, as it'll be harder to flank and there'll be a lot of utility to break on site for your duelist. When using your TP, you have two options. Use it for entry or save it for postplant. The entry TP lets you teleport from the most dangerous part of the map, while the postplant TP allows for flexibility in playing off angles or crossfires with your teammate after a spike is planted. Use the postplant TP if the enemy team has been applying light pressure to the site and playing retake, or if your team has multiple initiators to support your duelist. The opposite applies for the entry TP. The last role Chamber has on attack is support. It's lesser known, but still just as important. As support, your job is to identify the most dangerous angle for the team and hold it. Once you're able to communicate what angle you're holding, your team is able to focus their crosshairs and utility on clearing the closer angles. Oftentimes, the most dangerous angle for your team is the longest angle, making the support role one of the few instances where opping on attack is viable. When playing support, try to get your team to plant for your position as it will give your team a significant post-plant advantage. Another advantage to playing support is having more potential trip locations. You can play support when you aren't finding value with the other roles or when you've played the other roles multiple times. If your team is defaulting, then this isn't a bad role either as it's passive and a good way to get information. While support may not provide the most value to your team, it's the most consistent option since it doesn't rely heavily on external variables. That's every role you need to know when playing Chamber. If you weren't taking notes, that's fine. Just take a screenshot of this. This diagram can be pretty intimidating at first, so let me go over it a bit. The text in green is for your team, while the text in red is for the enemies. So let's say the enemy team has multiple initiators. You would look for the red text that says multiple initiators and see that you can play either multi-frag or anchor. Now let's say your team's on eco round. The diagram shows that you can play first blood or multi-frag. See, it's not too bad. Here's a diagram for attack as well. Ideally, you'll memorize most of this so you won't have to refer to the diagrams, but it's a great resource until then. Now, during the buy phase of every round, you should be able to determine the best role your team needs by going through a mental checklist. This will eliminate any inconsistency and with practice, make you one of the top chamber players in Valorant. With the fundamentals covered, you can start to learn the fun stuff like trip and TP placements for each role, as well as the intricacies of the agent. I recommend you get used to recognizing when to use what role before you add another layer such as setups into the mix. But if you think you're ready, then check out part 2 of this video series.
If you're not ready, check out my other video where I uncover the biggest mistakes you can make in Valorant and how you can fix them. To keep the video short, I wasn't able to include many examples of each role. So if you want to see how Chambers played, you should check out my live streams. I stream once a week.